Straining out the net. We can strain out the net and swallow the camel. Expression Jesus used against the Pharisees, the, those of the dead letter. What do I mean? Now, in light of what Renee, just the dear sister in Christ, Renee Rule, in her videos, gets a lot of tax. Uh, what do I mean in light of what Renee is sharing in this video? She was dealing with the subject matter of, of comparing the King James Version to the International Version. You know, the New International Version and how they've taken a lot of things out and twisted the Word of God. So, something she's not doing. It's not something that she's doing. She's not straining out and swallowing a camel. We'll find out here what I mean. There are those who, using the King James text, do no better than those using the NIV. So, I mean, I understand what she's bringing out. How they've taken this King James, the King James Bible, and compared it to the NIV, New International Version, showing how they've taken words out, twist words, translated a difference. You know? But there are those, now, they would say, well, we follow just the King James. Then you'll find those who attack those who follow just the King James. And the debate goes on and on, and they're straining out the net, but they're swallowing a camel. It's like I'm going to be bringing out here. How did Renee, or you and others, know that the in, in New and National Version was incorrect in his translation? Now, did you go to some other scholars? Then you got to ask, where did they get their information? Well, they got it from other scholars. Where did they get their information? And it gets on back. Nobody knows where they're getting their information. Now, how did Rene or you and others know that the NIV was incorrect in his translation? Who revealed this to you? <laughs> Is it possible that the Holy Spirit could use either translation or no translation at all? I'll be dealing with that. Okay. Do you realize that the Pharisees had the original Hebrew text? Understand that? Yet when the living words stood right in front of them, Jesus held to the dead letter of the Hebrew text and rejected the living words coming out of the mouth of Jesus, the Son of God, as a son of man, Joseph the carpenter's son, that's all they could say, who had said, the words I speak are not my own, but the words of my father. I see, I hear, thus I act on what I heard, and do the works to, that he had sent me to do. It's not Jesus' words, it's not his actions. Because he said, remember another text, he's saying, uh, I have many things to say and judge of you, but the one who sent me is true. And he had to be about doing his father's work, not the work of Jesus. God through that vessel as a son of man. Now, as a son of God, he knew what the father knew. But when he came here as a son of man to, to, to qualify as a true man, he had to be like us. <laughs> he had to gain these things. He learned those things by obedience and things that he suffered, which I'll be getting in here in a minute. So Jesus did not act independent from God. They call it sin. I said I did that one uh, common area of her videos. I had put down there, you got to see sin as acting independent of God. And I use the text out of the book of, of Proverbs. Be not to you and understand, but all your ways acknowledge him, he would direct your path. And I said, that's saying that. Someone said they wanted to know what chapter and text I got that thought, acting independent of God. What chapter and text does it say that? And what book of the Bible? But it doesn't say it that way. What I share is living words, because I'd asked the Holy Spirit, when I was reading the chapter of, uh, of Proverbs, you know, lean not into your own understanding, all your ways acknowledge him, you direct your path. And he says to me, uh, you know what that's really saying? I said, no, what's it really saying? You're acting independent from God. You're leaning into your own understanding. You're not acknowledging God at all in everything you say and do. And you're directing your own path, and you wonder why you're getting yourself into a mess. If you'd wait through the Spirit for him to direct you in your life, Acknowledge him in the course of any given day, you'd be in the living word. You won't be acting independent from God. Thus, you wouldn't be sinning. You could be doing good that day, thinking you're doing something good to find out. It wasn't what God wanted to express through you that day. 
The words I speak are not my own, but the words of my Father I see here. Thus I act on what I have heard, and to do the works that he has sent me to do. Jesus did not act independent from God. Did not go with his weak soul of intellect and feelings. He said the flesh was weak. Your flesh is weak. Unless you eat his flesh, come to that weakness. Maybe you said that, that far to be understood, hard to be understood statement. Saying to a crowd of people that were following around, he had a great crowd until he finally says to them some living words. He says, then, yes, you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part with me. God, then they all departed. The disciples says, he says to his disciples, yeah, will you leave as well? Now, they didn't quite understand either, any more than the crowd understood. They said, well, where are we going to go? You got words of life. Now, we don't, may not understand that expression, but we're going to find out. We're going to stick with the living word. Yeah. So, Jesus did not act in for God, did not go with his weak soul of intellectual feelings, but put his judgments and feelings aside. And only spoke that which he had heard from the Father, living words, or as he had said, the words that I speak, they are spirit, and they are life. He had gone, if he had gone with his Hebrew background, and his understanding of the Hebrew language, he would not have given living words through his spirit, coming from his father as a son of man. It is written, though he was a son, yet learned obedience by the things he suffered. So what did he suffer? What did he learn? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of, of God. Now, don't get, don't get hung up in just bread. He's not talking just about bread. That's as bad as the, his disciples in the boat. And he says to them, Beware of the leavening of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the Herodians. And they thought he was talking about bread. He wasn't talking about bread. He was talking about the doctrine teachings, the dead letter teaching that the Pharisees and Sadducees were, were, were objecting to him giving the living word of the Father. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, catch this. If he where he expressed it, in the wilderness, temptation by the devil, if he had leaned on the letter of the Old Testament, which the devil was quoting correctly, he would have had to turn the stones to, to bread. But he asked the father at that moment, what's the father say to him? Man don't live by bread alone, but every word proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he didn't turn the stones into bread. That was tempting to get act independent from God. So if he had listened to what the devil, which was quoting it correctly, he would have had acted independent from the living word from God our Father and turned the stones into bread. Now something he does do as the letter of the Father led on using a few fishes and bread, remember? Don't get hung up on fishes and bread. Just because you read the Bible, even if it's in its original translation, doesn't mean you're acting on the spirit of that word. They weren't. They had it. They knew. If you are acting on the leading of the ho of the spirit of the written word, you're only ministering death unaware. Now, people don't mean it. They, they don't do it intentionally. Some people hear this, understand what I'm talking about, and intentionally fight this. It's the letter that should lead you. Now, here it is. The letter should lead you to this living word. Peter says, we have a more sure word of prophecy that we should pay attention to. As the light that shines in a dark, squandered place until the day dawns and the day star rises in your heart. That's the living word. That's your quick and human spirit. That's your spirit that's in tune with God your Father and you listen to your Father's words. Not through the dead letter or what people around you are saying. You always consult Him. It's the letter that should lead you to this living word. It's not the letter itself. That's the value of the letter. So we aren't throwing out the Bible. People accuse you of doing that. As those of Jesus, they accuse him of doing. Do you realize that they only had the Old Testament? Now catch this part. Do you realize that they only had the Old Testament? They were writing the new, right? So they, do you realize that they only had the Old Testament at the, at the many writings of what we call the New Testament? That's all they had. Yet there were those who had the Old Testament in its original language, those who should have known Hebrew, 
better than all our Hebrew scholars today. They should have had more than words. They should have had the living experience of those words, yet they left the spirit out of it, turning that word into what the apostle Paul, I didn't put that there, I'll type that in a minute, discovered and turned into a dead letter. So in conclusion, if the living word today doesn't speak to us, like in the matter Renee raised up of the NIV. Now she didn't get that from any book. She'd ask the Lord, she's reading that in NIV. Someone's quoting from the NIV, so she reads it and she senses in her something's wrong. And she compared the two. And she saw the difference. She didn't need somebody to instruct her. Holy Spirit tells you. All you would all you would be doing. Let me read that whole sentence again. So in conclusion, if the living words of the day don't speak to us like in the matter of Renee raised up in the, of the NIV, all you would be doing is straining out a gnat and swallowing the camel. In other words, living words. The gnat is, is, the, is the debate over translations. When the bigger issue is, what is the living word? Those of the dead letter will attack this, expect this. Now, I hesitate posting this into her comment area of her video. You get those of the dead letter come and attack this. You don't want to know where all there is that written. What chapter and text? You notice I didn't put no chapter and text here. I'm quoting the Word of God in the framework of living words. As I viewed her videos, I had to go off and say, Father, I'm listening to Renee's video. I understand. It. I agree with her. And she's bringing it out the best way she can. What would you, not to add to what she's saying, but to confirm what she's saying. So this is what he gave me. I take it for what it's worth. I always say that. I could go and say, Thus saith the Lord that the Holy Spirit spoke to Paul Woodward. You got to hear it. Hey, take it for what it's worth. Everybody's saying that. The Holy Spirit. But they've learned to do that. See, the devil's clever. He'll get his, his false prophets to say things and all they do is put a sticker on it the Holy Spirit told me. God the Father told me. When it had nothing to do with the God the Father or the Holy Spirit at all. That's times I hear people quote that. I say, Holy Spirit, there's something wrong about that. Did you tell him that? And his response is, no. I never told him no such thing. I said, what do I do? Expose him? He said, no. Let it play out. Give it time. Whatever it is of me, I will uproot. And then I complained to him one time. I said, well, then if you're going to um, uproot those who are not speaking the truth, how come you allow the Jehovah Witness and the Mormons to be there for as long as they've been there? And the average Christian would know that they're wrong. How come you don't uproot it? Then I found a text in the book of Corinthians. I'll post it up here if I think of it. If not, you go look it up. Why come there heresies among us? And God explains to Paul why he allows it to come. It tells you who is who and where they're coming from. You'll know the truth. You don't need nobody to tell you. And you just, you have an inward sense of knowing that there's something wrong what's being said here. You may not know at the moment, but if you would ask and wait to your spirit, he'll reveal it. You go and expose them. If let a God to do that, you do that. Many times I'm not let a God. He just says, let, no, just nothing for a time. Don't start trying to separate the wheat from the tares. The sheep from the goats. Each case, separating the sheep from the goats and separating the wheat from the tares is done by the angelic host, not us. We will have our job. We will have our task. They do that. And someday, in the future, now I can get off and that's, I won't go there. Someday in the future, they'll be at our command. Not right now. I'm not commanding angels. I, tell, I share it to the Father. And the Father directs them. There are ministry spirits to those of us who have inherited this kingdom, this salvation that's in us. They're at God's bidding, not mine. I don't sit there and direct angels around. I tell people, you get people doing that. I said, Lord, there's something wrong about this guy. He, he had these angels standing at the end of his bed. He even said that these angels were his relatives. <laughs> you mean your relatives? We're not going to become angels. We'll be like them, but we won't be angels. 
And it says in Scripture, to what angel did he ever say, Behold, this day thou art my son. No angel. They're only ministering spirits. And I got a long drawn out video I'm working on. It reveals that the jealousy of, of Lucifer was just that fact. God calling us the sons of God. And him desiring to be the sons of God. And he gets the third of heaven to join him. When he to uh, put God down in what he had, what he was doing. Uh, so I won't get there as long, rather drawn out. But in light of what Renee was saying in her video, are we straining out the gnat and swallowing the camel? You got to get to see the living word. It's all right to debate about the. You know, you people. You know, for every time, and you find somebody that's fighting against the NIV. You find those who are fighting against the King James. Then you get into the fighting whether the King James was written in Hebrew or Greek. Then you got debates going on that. And you get done, you know, after all, you're just tired and weary of all the conflicts and the debates. And while they're all debating this, they're straining out from that and they're missing, you're following the camel. That they're not listening to the living word of God and getting out of these debates. I've been there back in all these chat rooms 20 years ago. Every debate that was going on back then still going on today. They're forever learning. Never come to see. Always straight out that, swallowing the camel. So I hope you got something out of this. God bless you.